Hey, how's it going, guys? Gonna do an update for you. Uh, I'm gonna test the water. We'll see where it's at. It's been seven days since it's been set up. And uh, like you saw in the setup video, the rocks had Aptasia. I've been dealing with them pretty effectively. I've gone a few days without seeing one. And I've just found one today. So what I do is I look at the front every day, inspect the rocks, all in the holes uh, is usually where they're gonna be at. And then I'll come behind here and put a mirror and just sort of move it around everywhere. And so in doing that, I found one Aptasia. Let's zoom into it. There you go. So he must have regenerated from one that I killed around that area. I must have left a little bit, um, just enough tissue for one to regenerate. Because, like I said, it's been a few days since I've seen one. And this guy is pretty big. Um... So I'm just going to show you how I go about doing that. It's really simple, uh, a simple torch and a bit of super glue to seal them up in there. And that should be the most effective way to take care of them. Okay, so go ahead and put these gloves on. I'm going to torch the anemone first before I test the water. That way I know he's dead and taken care of. I like to put on gloves because the tank's small enough that I don't have to really submerse my arm in there. So if I can avoid putting my hand in there and getting any sort of fatty acids, soap, or anything on there, I'll do that. Put these seeds away, I'm just germinating some tropical seeds because this uh, LED strip produces quite a bit of heat. But we'll go ahead and take this off. I never keep it on there tight. Let's see how that is. Uh, it's kind of destroying our lighting here. There we go. And I'll explain what I did with this hood here. Um, really simple. I just saran wrapped it. I found that I was losing about a millimeter to two millimeters of water a day. I've got a line marked with just dry erase marker in the back. And having this for a couple days now, I've, I've reduced that significantly. So I would recommend it. I doubt that there's any change in uh, dissolved oxygen levels in here. The... Uh, the bio cubes and all those other all-in-one tanks that you see, they have full hoods on them and you see beautiful tanks always. So, shouldn't shouldn't be a, any issue with that. So, let's go ahead and kill it. What I like to do is get everything ready because as soon as you move this rock, the anemone just goes right back down into its little hole. So, find where it's at, make sure you know it, and have everything ready. Your torch is what I mean. And then as soon as you pop them out, Give them the torch treatment. And I'll hold it in there for 10, 15 seconds even. Make sure that he's really cooked up and those proteins aren't going to come back. And it's going to kill all your uh, bacteria and stuff that are living on the rock, any, anything that's alive that's on the rock, it'll probably kill about a half a square inch around it, but it's a lot better than having anemone or aptasia anemones around there. But this has been the best method at taking care of it. Torch the crevice it's in and then go ahead and seal them in there. Just like that. Got it sealed up right in there. And it's just as simple as that. I haven't, like I told you, it's been a few days since I've seen one. I thought that I had it all taken care of, but uh, it's been the most effective way so far. The injecting them really didn't work. It's, it's hit or miss. All right, so next part, I've got a Thermometer hanging in the well with uh, uh, where the heater is. It's reading 82 right now. That's inside where the pump or where the heater is. And then I'll I'll take the temperature there. I'll record the temperature in there on uh, on my Excel spreadsheet. And I'll take the temperature in the display area and see. I'm tracking the difference between what that uh, area is and what this area is. And then I've also got a stick on the glass one right here. 
and I just I'm tracking all of them, checking to see which ones displaying accuracy. I mean, so far, you know, they tell you the glass ones are within two degrees um, of this one, and that's been pretty true. It it hasn't been so off uh, as compared to the thermometer in the water, but right here in the tank, it's reading. It's going down. I'll let it finish going down. But I think that the tank has finally cycled. Um, the first time I tested it, I had ammonia at 0.1, and the last time I tested it, it was at 0.25, and that it was at 0.1 after I set it up, and then it was at 0.25 after I threw in like a shrimp pellet to decay in there. So the temperature in the display area is about 80, so it's 2 degrees less, and it's that's what it's usually been so far, about 2 degrees less than what the um, pump in there is, or where the, the sump area is. And then the glass is reading at, the glass reads 78, so it is 2 below. And I'll just do one last check, use my mirror here in the back, look around. And I don't see anything else moving. So I'll test the water. Let you guys know how that's, how the cycle is going. What point I'm at right now at seven days out. Alrighty, so finished up testing the parameters of the water. I used my fresh water kit that I already had. I used that for the nitrite, nitrate, ammonia, and the high range pH on there. And then the Reef Master test kit um, not using the nitrate that it came with and I'm just using the calcium, uh, carbonate hardness and phosphate. So in this order I've got calcium, uh, I believe it's carbonate hardness, phosphate, high pH, uh, ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. And so you can see I've got a little bit of ammonia going, no nitrite and no nitrate right now. So the tank has still not cycled and it's been seven days so far. Um, my, phosph my phosphates are a bit high at around 1.0 and that's most likely due to the shrimp pellet that's down here that's been decaying. Um, using some Chemipure Blue and Fosgard right after the cycle and that should help take care of the phosphates and I won't ever really be leaving food down at the bottom of the tank like that. Uh, calcium tested at I believe it was 400 between 400 and uh, 410, 420 which is uh, not so bad and carbonate hardness was between 10 and 11 which is right where you want it to be you know your calcium is going to be good when your carbonate hardness is uh, uh, doing well so that's it for testing the kit make sure you're using gloves when you're doing that these are chemicals that you don't want to be dealing with and without gloves and with bare skin so if you have goggles wear your goggles you don't want to get the stuff in your eyes uh, chemicals are a serious thing guys um, and then last little pro tip I've got for you is the nano mag so this is the best purchase for this tank so far it's eleven dollars and this is the part that goes inside the tank look how small that is and the magnet for it is super strong like let's see where how far we can get it before it just gets sucked right in there you go really strong magnet and it's it's pretty hard to pull it off I probably yeah, I can do it with one hand, but it's pretty tough. On the back side, it's kind of got like Velcro. So just be careful. Don't get sand in there. And if you do any saltwater fishing like I do, you know that saltwater is really corrosive. There's some um, metal in here, obviously, for the magnets. Always take this out after using it in the tank and rinse it in some fresh water really good and dry it out. And don't, don't leave it in your tank. Usually, I just hang it up right here, right on this uh, light... light uh, light pole that I've got and that works out for it well uh, the last update that I have that I want to show you like I told you guys I'm in school and I have a lot of late nights when I'm studying so if the lighting ever gets to be an issue I've got this box right here that the tank actually came in that I can just cover it over and that takes care of uh, spooking the corals and shocking them with light all night long and light just turned off. I've got it on a about seven and a half hour cycle right now. It seems to be doing well. 
I've got high phosphates and I really don't have any algae as of yet. Um, if I ever see algae start growing, I'll cut the light down to a probably six hour cycle. That seems to be what everyone with the Nano is doing. And yeah, that's the cycle so far. I'll give you guys an update probably in another seven days and let you know how the Aptasia are doing and how the cycle is going. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully this will be informative and helpful for you guys that are setting up your own nano reef. Okay, so before I go, I just want to go over why you can't really trust your local fish store. And so let's take a look here. On the 12th, I went into the fish store and had them do the testing. I, I like to test my water and I like to have my fish store, local fish store, test the water just so I can compare the results that I'm getting. And... Um, so we matched up on phosphate, uh, we were pretty close on calcium, it was my first time test testing calcium so I probably didn't do it correctly but now I've learned how to do that and we're pretty close now from the 12th and the test from today on the 15th and then we were right on with nitrite and it's right here at nitrate. So. At the fish store they were trying to convince me that my tank had already cycled. Uh, they thought that the ammonia was zero, nitrate was five, and nitrite was zero. Hence, that the cycle has completed. But, as you see, I've tested two times after that, and I always have my little brother um, give me his input as well as, what, as to what he sees on the uh, test. And both of us see zero nitrate, zero nitrite, and there's still ammonia in the water. Um... The only thing that I like to have tested there, I don't have my refractometer yet, I've ordered it but it hasn't come, is the salinity uh, 1.022 and that was because I had topped it off with distilled water um, when I should have used sal um, salt water because I had um, inadvertently taken some salt water out of the aquarium. But uh, you can take a look here, the temperature of the glass, it fluctuates a bit with my, I've got an automatic heater in my room, because my room's uh, heating doesn't usually uh, get good circulation with the house. So you can see little uh, changes through there, and it's uh, discrepancies with the temperature that's in the sump, where the uh, heater is, it usually sits around 82, 81 the temperature in the display side where the heated water is getting out into sitting around eight, 78 to 80 which is right on perfect and then the temperature on the glass the stick on uh, digital thermometer really isn't too off from that but yeah you just gotta understand that your local fish store they're in it for a business um, it's nice that you can go in and get some information from them but you have to understand as well that 80% of the time they're in it to make money as well so they will tell you what you need to do um, in order to to get them more satisfaction uh, monetary satisfaction so just take that with a grain of salt uh, you may not agree with me um, and maybe your fish store is is a lot a uh, lot, lot less grimy than that but yeah that's that's just sort of where I'm at right now. I need to leave the tank for a bit longer and let the nitrifying bacteria colonize. So have a good one, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Lightning before the thunder. Thunder.